Hello everyone, welcome to Amcode and now we are going to start our new series which is related to Unix shell scripting where we will cover all the topics related to Unix so that you can start making your own scripts. So now our today's topic is the introduction to the Unix. So before going to the shell scripting, we have to get to know what really is a Unix as the shell scripting is only the set of commands that you are going to execute. So first, let's get started with the Unix concepts. So the first question will be what really is a Unix? So the Unix is nothing but a operating system, which is a set of programs that acts as a connection between the computer and the user. So what do you mean by operating system? So it is nothing but the computer programs that allows the system resources and coordinate all the details of the computer's internals is nothing but a operating system or in the other words we can also call it as a kernel. The users which is nothing but you will communicate with the kernel through a program which is known as the shell. So shell is nothing but a program which we will be used for communicating with the kernel or a operating system. So the shell is command line interpreter. It translates the command entered by the user and converts them into the language which can be understood by the kernel. But first, let me give you some historical information about this Unix language just to prepare you guys for an interview. So Unix was originally developed in 1969 by the group of AT&T employees at the Bell Labs. So there are various Unix variants which are available in the market right now which are Solaris Unix, AIX, HP Unix and BSD. So these are some few examples. So Linux is also a flavor of Unix which is freely available to all the users. So several people can use Unix computer at the same time. Hence Unix is called the multi-user system. So a user can also run multiple programs at the same time. So hence it is just like a multitasking environment. So now we will discuss the architecture of a Unix. So this is the basic block diagram of a Unix system. So the main concept of an architecture which unites all the versions of Unix depends on the four basic terms which are kernel, shell, commands and utilities and files and directories. So these four topics we will cover in detail. So what do you mean by kernel? We have already discussed this earlier. So the kernel is the heart of operating system. It interacts with the hardware and most of the tasks like memory management, task scheduling and the file management. The next one is the shell. So shell is the utility which processes your request. So whatever the command you are passing, it will convert it into the language which will be understood by the kernel. So when you type a command at your terminal, the shell interpreter interprets the command and calls the program that you want. So this uses standard syntax for all the commands. So C shell, bone shell and con shell are the most famous shells which are available with the most of the Unix variants. Regarding the different types of shells, we will discuss them in the further tutorials. Our next main point is commands and utilities. So as the name suggests, there are various commands and utilities which we can use to perform our day-to-day -day activities such as copy, move, concatenate and grep. These are some popular commands which any of the user will use regularly. So there are over 250 standard commands plus the numerous others which are provided through the third party softwares. So these all commands comes along with the various options. And our last topic is files and directories. So all the data of the Unix is organized into the files and all the files are then organized into the directories. So these directories are further organized into a tree like structure. Our next topic is system boot up and the login to Unix. So since many of you will be using the Windows desktop. So this topic we will quickly wound up and I will also suggest you one software that you can install to practice the shell scripting and you can also build your own shell script. So if you have a computer which has the Unix operating system installed in it, 
then you just simply need to turn on the system and make it live. So as soon as you turn on the system, it starts booting up and finally it prompts you to log into the system. So which is a activity you have to do to perform your day to day activities. For logging into the Unix, you usually see a prompt in which you have to provide all your credentials. You have to use your user ID and password and just press the enter. So if you're using the Windows desktop, I will suggest you to use the Sigwin terminal to practice your shell scripting. So how to install Sigwin? I will provide the link and the step by step procedure in the description below. So after installing the Sigwin, just boot it up and here you can see this user interface of Sigwin software where you will see the username and the desktop name and here you can see the dollar symbol. So this dollar symbol will suggest this shell is a type of born shell. The different types of shell we will discuss it in our further tutorials. This is the shell prompt where you can just start executing the commands. So for example if you want to get the calendar there is a simple command such as cal. After hitting enter, as you can see, you will get the calendar and the two days date highlighted here. So this is one simple command which you can execute directly into the shell prompt. So this is one simple example of a shell command. Our next topic is how to change the password in Unix system. So all the Unix system will require a password to ensure that all our files and data will remain ours and the system itself will be secure from the hackers and crackers. So to ensure that you have to periodically change your password by using this password command. So this is the command you can use to change your password. Let me show you how. So in the Sigwin terminal, you just have to type the password command, which is not a password. Instead, it is instead it is like P A W -S, S and W D. It is not a password word. So just keep that in mind. After hitting that, you just have to provide your old password. And after hitting enter, it will ask you the new password. After that, you have to again provide and retype your new password. So I'm not going to show you the whole procedure as it is very simple and you, you can do that on your own. Our next topic and the most important is listing out the directories and files. So this command you are going to use so often for performing your day to day activities. So it is very important command that you should always keep into the mind. All data in the Unix is organized into the files and all the files are organized into the directories. We have already discussed this earlier. So we can use the ls command to list out all the files or directories which are available in our directory. So let me show you with some simple example. So again we have switched to the Sigwin terminal and just for listing out the files and directories just type the ls command. After hitting enter, you can see all the files and directories which are present in our present directory. But there are so many options in the ls command that we will discuss now such as ls hyphen l which will list out the directories along with all their details. Let me show you how. Just type ls hyphen l. After hitting enter, as you can see the whole lot of information which is coming. I will tell you what actually the meaning of each column here. So here the entries which are starting with D. So here all the entries are starting with D. So it represents the directories. Here you can also find the username and the content. So here you can see there is a no content present in these all the directories and and the date on which they are created as well as the time and at the last the name of the directory. So these all details you can get where you use hyphen L option in the ls command. Our next topic is quite a bit weird which says who are you. So I know it is a bit weird but bear with me. So when you log into your Unix system, sometimes you might be willing to know the username. So to know that you have to use the who am I command. Let me show you how. So again we have switched to the Sigwin terminal. So let me clear the screen by using the clear command. So to do that just type clear and hit enter. So as you can see the our screen has been cleared. 
so to know which username is currently logged in you just type who am i just type enter as you can see you will get the username which is currently logged in so this is very simple command that can be beneficial whenever many of the users are present in the system uh, but sometimes you might be interested to know who is logged into your computer at the same time so there are three major commands which are available to get you this information based on how much you wish to know about the other users such as users who and w our next topic is logging out from the system so when you finish your work you need to log out of the system this process is to ensure that nobody else can access your files so for logout just simply type the logout command at the command prompt and the system will clean up everything and breaks the connection so this is very simple process but the most consistent way to shut down a unique system properly via the command line is to use one of these following given commands so first one is halt so it brings the system down immediately the second one is init zero this powers up the system using the predefined scripts to synchronize and clean up the system prior to shutting down next one is init 6 it reboots the system by shutting it down completely and then restarting it next one is power off which shut down the system by powering off then the reboot which reboots the system and the shutdown command will shut down the system so you typically need to be the super user or the root user to shut down the system however on some of the standalone or personally owned unix boxes an administrative user and sometimes a regular user can use this command to shut down the system so in this lecture we have covered all the introductory part of the unix what is a unix its architecture and some different commands and we have also seen how to use the sigwin terminal to practice the shell commands So in the next lecture we will take a deep dive into our Unix tutorial. If you like this video please subscribe to our channel and also ring the notification bell to get the latest updates. Also don't forget to connect us on social media which are linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.